welcome back for this uh, recording in progress. Got it. Um, for the second lecture, uh, at least for, from what I'm going to talk about, Zhao did, uh, I think, a pretty good survey of the uh, features and, and properties of the uh, BM model without any interaction. And this first part of the lecture will try to give you a rough picture of what you can get when you're at individual feelings. Uh, and we have strong interaction uh, in the space of the unit. And I think Joe will uh, have some time to talk about more fancy stuff um, on, on the same night. Anyway, uh, I need to just to recap quickly a few reasons uh, that we talked about with us in the last time. Namely, that if you just focus on the non interacting twisted value of the in the BM model, you remember that we have completely take up all the two values and we forgot, completely forgot the speed here. So we had two active bands. And thanks to the uh, CTC, uh, the CTC symmetry, we were able to define a churn basis. A uh, particular interesting limit, and I think I've shown you the band structure, was to set the interior opening between AA side to zero. So the Carroll limit, mainly, so setting the interior equal to zero, it was uh, when you look at the magic angle, I gave an image to the situation, which is a bit more realistic for the ratio double to zero to the point one, so around 0.6 or 0.8. And in that image, your, your chain basis is actually if you the eigenstate directly of the active band. When we will deal with interaction, now we have to plot back what we dropped the last time, namely the, the value and the, uh, the spin degree of freedom. So overall, we are discussing, we are dealing with two ends coming from the two active ends. Of the VN model. We have, so that's the two flat bands around the zero machine. We have now a factor of two for uh, the value degree of freedom. And another factor of two for the speed. So total we have eight active bands. So if you remember the, uh, the picture we have for the band structure, actually have uh, one here. So these are the active bands. Um, if you define a beam factor, you have to take some reference because you have, in principle, an infinite number of bands below the active band. So usually what you do is to define the, the charge and trinity when you have half filling of these eight bands. The filling factor will be defined with respect to this charge and trinity. And if you look at the active bands, the filling factor will go from minus four, means if you completely deplete the eight active bands up to d equal to four, which is like completely uh, built. And if you think about the, the carrier limits, basically each of the eight bands would have well defined quantum numbers characterized by the channel number in y, the, the spin degree of freedom, and the value. So I will use uh, this color code and hope I will not change it during the slides. Mainly, I use the blue color for the, uh, for the channel number plus one, red for the uh, channel number minus one. Okay, that's the situation without any interaction. So if you forget the kinetic energy of the empty bands, you have eight exactly the generate bands. So if you take a green factor, let's say like minus three, well, it's just you know one eighth of the field of this A band, and they are massive addition. You have you know macroscopic number of possibilities to fill this eight band with just one electron per um, overall. So the interaction will, of course, lift the children's degeneracy. The question is how. And once again, uh, we, in this talk, 
I will solely focus on the integer pin. So once again, without interaction, we have a macroscopic degeneracy of the ground space. <laughs> Which are new between minus four and plus four. I explore for the two cases where it's computed and the ground state is just unique of plus four when it's not computed. Now, can we have an idea of what's going on when we have interactions? Well, uh, we can think about uh, a different system or slightly different system. And um, you know, these days people love the 80s. And if you if you a little bit know about the 80s, at that time it was fashion in Connect Spider was the integer quantum world effect and the fraction quantum world effect. So if you look at the problem of uh, the integer quantum world effect at spinning factor mu equal to one. So here on the, uh, the left hand side, uh, I have a visual diagram for the, for the Lando level. I uh, solely focus on the lowest Lando level. And mu equal to one is the same spirit of different way of defining the pin factor for, for a TPG means that you have two bands for the lowest Lando level. One band is for spin up, the other one for spin down. There's a slight difference here. Well, they all have the same chain number. Okay. But mu equal to one means that you're, you're calculating of these two bands. And what you get is not the same as not degenerate, but you will get the integer probable ferromagnetism. Namely, the interaction will try to enforce to have the maximal spin. So the maximal spin, how do you get? Well, you get it by, you know, putting all the electrons, let's say, in the band, which all the spin up. Of course, you still have the SVQ degeneracy if you forget about A and Zeeman term. And with this system, we have all the electrons piling up, really putting the lowest lowest standard level. You can also perform any SVQ rotation, and you will still get the ground state of the system. Uh, I know that some, maybe some chemists uh, that's a part of this school, but it's just the Hood's rule. That, that you know from from chemistry. It's the same idea. You will try to have orbitals to do the interaction. You will try to favor cases where you maximally uh, occupy the orbitals rather than having like a single per one by one orbital. So you try to maximize the speed. And it's really due to the interaction because if you look at the energy scale, what you get from the Zeeman is actually one of the times smaller than the effect. Because of the over here, which is really inherently due to the strong interaction. So we, we can imagine that for the, the system for the twisted layer of graphene, we could find kind of a similar situation appearing. Maybe we have some kind of thermatism in that case, some, for some treating facts, interesting factors. Okay, so. Uh, let's talk about the, kind of, the type of interaction we will consider here. Um, depends a little bit on the example set. Then we, um, you will find we type of two, two different um, cases. Here, it's the case where your twisted by graphene is gated both from the top and, and the bottom, or the, or the top and the bottom. Uh, the typical distance between the two gates is about of the other 10 nanometers, whereas the, the interlayer distance for TBT is around the amstrings. So, in that case, you will consider that the interaction 
between the uh, is the same whether or not you're considering the top layer or the bottom layer. The form of the interaction screen by the gate is written down here. The other setup that is especially important when you deal with XTM experiments, you only have one gate, the, the bottom gate. This will change the expression of P of Q, but the, the roughly the, um, the outcome will, will be the same. One important thing is the typical scale that's in place in terms of the 25 millimeters. If you remember the numbers I was quoting about the bare non-interacting TPT at the magic angle, I say that the bandwidth is typically of one mV, whereas the gap is on the order of 30 mV. So it's a good approximation when you look at the strong interaction to at least consider that it forget about the kinetic energy coming from the, uh, the active band. The question of whether or not you use and forget about the mixing that you might induce with passive density is another story that you use for that feature. With that in hand, now we can write down the interaction part of the Hamiltonian, and that's exactly what I've written down here. Um, to write the interaction directly in the space, and it, you know, it will just be the, the density density with, with the proper terms from. from the way I define the, uh, the density or the Fourier transform of the density of the electron is shifted to, to make sure that the density is zero when you're charged with neutrality. And the total Hamiltonian will be the sum of the two contributions, the one coming from the band structure H0 and the terms coming from the interaction H1. Is it an easy problem? Well, uh, in principle, not really, because you're dealing with a many body quantum system. And one thing you know about many body quantum system, it's a mess, especially when you cannot make you know, assumptions where you can, for example, deal with interactions of motivation. If you imagine just a, a bunch of um, uh, a quantum spin one half with you know, some, and some isenberg in between them, you know that if you want to just write down what's going on and put them in the computer, it, in principle, it's an exponentially hard problem. Once again, take n spin one half, grab the Hilbert space. Symmetries are not reducing, but will still be an exponential power with the numbers of degrees of freedom that you have in the system. So, if you want to try to do to analyze the activity part of the interaction numerically, there are a few things that you will do. You have to do well, the first one is to um, discretize the more the answer. So just using the same notation I use for the first lecture, so the two simple vector is in my normal zone. And what you do is you just use a real point rather than using the continuum version for what you need to get. Uh, of course, the number of points that you, you like to get is a very dense, dense mesh of points for the more gradient zone. But this will have a price to pay in terms of the, the complexity of the calculation and once again, so the exponential system size. And also, usually, when you uh, discretize your more gradient zone, you would like the grid to hit the high symmetry points. You should know that this is where you know, there's some things emerging here. But discretizing the more gradient zone is not enough to, uh, to help you here because if you say, well, these are all the field perceived bands or all the uh, oops, or the empty perceived bands. I mean, in principle, I have an infinite number of them just by the way I did the calculation. 
So clearly, an infinite number is a large number to be committed to a computer. There is another way to make another approximation. And then we need to consider only a small number of bands around the active bands. So most of the calculation people see in the people will focus on the active bands only. It doesn't make the calculation easy, but at least you can start applying some numerical methods to, to do that your problem. The most trivial one you can imagine uh, is called exact diagonalization. It's the most straightforward method. Basically, if you say, well, I take the given discretization of my Mariano, so let's say a six by six grid, and I take and the fitting factor um, U equal to minus three, so I know exactly how many electrons I have to consider. I only focus on two ends. I write massive matrix for this problem, and I just diagonalize to the computer. Uh, the advantage of such a method is really not trivial, but at least um, easy to understand what you're doing. And there is no bias, no assumption about the nature of the low energy physics. The drawback, of course, is you're quickly limited in terms of system size that you can look at. And especially when your system has such a high number of bands that you have to consider a system. So remember that if you only look at the active bands, you already have eight bands to deal with. So you can make a refinement there, and people have used density matrix denormalization group to study this problem. It's also a numerical approach that will make a slightly different assumption about, about the, uh, the nature of the energy physics, namely that you have a low entanglement. It's usually a pretty good assumption when it comes to um, physical system. With that, you usually have an exponential gain for a two-dimensional problem compared to its organization, but it's still exponential. You can make another type of assumption. You can say, well, uh, I know that by what I know from the, if I make the comparison, you could say look at your bank and that. I'm dealing with your bank, so box things. So I can use after plot methods. That's another numerical technique to try to approach this one. You make a different kind of assumption compared to the density matrix and organization group. And finally, you can try to make an educated guess or an answer. Uh, it works well. You can get the number of price with it. And just, we have a few examples in physics. Um, and usually, you, a nice way to get an educated guess is to try to simplify the model that you have up to the point you can make some analytical derivation. That's exactly what we will try to do for, for twisted biography. All right. So, what we do is basically follow the, the summary that I just gave you. We will work near the magic angle. We focus on the eight active bands that was mentioned before. And we simplify the Hamiltonian by projecting onto the eight bands. Remember that it's two for the two active bands on the DN model, two for the value and two for the spin. So n is just an index for the two bands for the real model. Eta, so that's the two and two bands. Eta is the value index, and S is the spin index. So in this, H0 is just the non-interacting part, and 
we have here used the eigenstate of the creation operators, emission operators for the eigenstate of the VM model. Well, the, uh, the, uh, the non interacting part is just diagonal, it's just the energy C diagonal C. For the interacting parts, you can write it in a slightly different way compared to the one I've written down previously. Um, remember that we are only dealing with recursive interaction. This is relative to the interaction between electrons. So, what we can do is the following we can write interaction this way, introducing the operator O, G, J, G, G. And it has a very nice property of being semi positive definite. So, namely, the complex or the, the Hamilton conjugates correspond to switch the uh, the sign of, of Q, which is the vector in the Meridian zone, and G, uh, and this is the last vector. You get the square root of, of beta, that's why you need the reverse interaction. M, which is called the form factor, and I will discuss this one later. And then you have the expression of the density positive onto the two, uh, uh, the two active, the, um, two active things, and shift it to the, the charge neutrality. So why I said that it was nice to have this semi, uh, positive semi-definite expression here. Well, the beauty of semi-definite uh, positive operator or Hamiltonian. Let's say I have H, which is the sum of the non-interacting one and the uh, interacting parts for the time being you can discard the, the kinetic energy so basically that's a flat and approximation but now h is just you just the q g and you have o q g dagger o q g And it's very positive, meaning the spectrum is bounded by zero. So if you find a way to write down a stage such as h of psi is equal to zero, then you know that psi is a ground state. Right? You're going to have an energy lower than zero for the single positive definite operator. It doesn't say it's the unique solution. But at least it tells you it's one of the solution. And what you do is actually the sum of subject positive different operators. What you will look for is a state that is annotated by each of these both operators. One uh, thing that you might also wonder. Uh, and it's related to the effects of the field. Let's see that. I might wonder well, these bands here, you have electrons. So clearly, there will be an interaction from the for the interaction in the electrons here and the electron active bands. That's clearly something that we forget, or it sounds like we forget that kind of interaction. When we project onto the two active bands. And you might also wonder why we didn't pick the normal ordering for the interaction. Usually, especially what you learn in mechanics, you have to, to deal take the, the normal the version of the operator. Well, that's something that John will actually show in more details during his lectures. That the way we have defined the interaction uh, without the normal ordering. Will take into account, or more precisely, will capture the effect of the field passive bands in a half trip of treatment. It's not a full fledged way to take into account uh, the, the passive, the field passive bands. But at least it gives you some correction due to these uh, field bands. Oh, 
Okay. We have the model uh, um, written down epsilon to the two bands. And if you look at the operator O, I was defined here, I said that there's a crucial ingredient which is the point binder. If you project onto some bands, you expect at some point you will have a wave function of the bands appearing in them. And the wave function appears actually in the point binder. Here are the expression of the form factor. The Q, Q, alpha, and beta uh, are the eigenstates of the VM model at the point K by beta, is the band spin, and for the for the band and alpha, so that is index. And Q is uh, you know, the sum over the latitude of the momentum, but that should be last time. And as I argued uh, also during my, my previous lecture, you know that the summation over the Q will converge exponentially uh, for, for the reason I, I mentioned. So it's something will also converge exponentially with the uh, with, uh, with predictor chain. But that's not an issue when you do the calculation on a computer. But if you want to prove or to derive an integral result here, um, there is one additional convenience assumption that you can make about these form factors. You can make the assumption that they do not depend on the first momentum k here. It's an assumption which, uh, if you look at one of the worst case scenarios, which, which is for the, the value of the point zero. Which is not perfect, and that's what these uh, plots uh, are trying to, to show you. There are still Q, you fix Q, you fix G, and look at how it depends along the high symmetry line and with K. First, it depends on G, it's actually for zero, there is no dependence. There is a slight dependence with, uh, with K when you look at other G values or other Q values. But overall, it's not such a, a drastic approximation. If you, and the, the, the nice feature is if you assume this property, you will be able to derive an integral result for the last state. The last uh, ingredient I need before discussing the result is the symmetries of the model. So we will discuss in, in all the the door details the symmetry of the VM model. Uh, now we need to more the continuous symmetry of the system in presence of the interaction. So first, you know, when you have interaction, you also have some discrete symmetries. I'm sure that Joe will we'll talk about them later today. Uh, I will take something that you for this game here. Namely, we'll focus on what's going on for the spin delay. So first, if you don't make any special assumption, you just make an interaction projected across the infinity term, projected into the two active and three active bands. In all generality, you have the two cross your two symmetry. So let me just guide you a little bit uh, where it comes from. Remember this operator O that defines the interaction term. Oops. Let's focus on this thing. You see that the, the S index for the spin only comes here. In the summation here and uh, in the unit density operator. I could really write this in a slightly different way by summing the k, eta, summing over n, n, that is square root of b, we have the um, form factor, and we have the sum over s. Let's see that here, s, c, s, and this is how. And now it's a situation that she knows very well, namely, if you take a system with skin degree of freedom, which you define it to a density, and as the sum of the density for the electron will spin up, and the sum of the electron will spin density for the electron will spin down. Well, this one is invariant under the situation of the spin. The, for the uh, non interacting part of the end, you also have a specific two because if you remember, 
it's just uh, a simple summation of the S. It's the agony of the state to this thing. So that's for the speed part. Uh, you can look at the value of the field. It's also diagonal on theta, but not necessarily confined to the problem if you would like to the like a rotation in the value because of freedom. The fact it's diagonal on theta, it's like being commute with AC, you can commute with the analog of the AC for, for the value, it just means that you have a charge conservation per value. So that's why you have a U2 cross U2 symmetry. It's one U2 per value. To be composed into U1s, so the charge conservation. And we get U2 symmetry coming from the state. Can actually do much better than that. It did now if you make additional assumption about your model, let's say if you discard the kinetic energy, then what you can show is you will enhance your U2 cross U2 symmetry into a Q4 symmetry. Basically, just imagine a system that you have um, your particles at four degrees of freedom. In a something like an interaction interaction uh, Hamiltonian, uh, where for the, it's just density density, and the density the sum of the four densities, one per type of component. You have a SU4 symmetry. That's basically what you would get in, in that case here. You can have also, you can look at the Carroll symmetry. On on the interaction, you see that the Carroll symmetry will commute with H naught, but it can like commute with H and zero. So, depending on the type of symmetry, you can actually promote, if you were in the Carroll limit, the U2 cross U2 to another U4 symmetry. This time it's a rotation to convey the speed, to the freedom, and the churn, uh, churn index. And the best. Option would be to be the Carroll flat band limit. Because in that case, the symmetry of the model is Q4 cross U4. It's basically your U4 per, um, per chain number. And you have this here diagram that summarizes different situations when you can go from the most symmetric case, the Carroll flat band limit, up to the worst case scenario where you have. You're all away from the temperament and you're considering the kinetic energy, but you just have a little cross your symmetry. All right, that's the end for, for the model. And now, well, you can try to either find a good guess for what is the nature of the ground state of this final model, or you can derive and decode the expression of the ground state, or do numerical simulations. This is basically a summary of what I've written previously of the, 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 uh, the assumption that we make. The flat band limit, where um, we are doing this with H being a semi dependent operator. The second item here is just how we find the ground state by looking at say that I need to like all the both teaching operators. The, the chiral limit and the flat metric condition. If you have everything here, then you can actually find the expression of these states. And maybe unsurprisingly, uh, what you find is well, these are the generalization of the integer quantum by vector magazine. So it will depend on the three factors you're considering. So let's start with. This situation here at the thing factor minus 30. So you could say, well, minus 3 is like occupying one of the eight, then 
That's what this picture shows here, right? I decided to occupy the band with the chain number minus one, speed up, and by k. But in the same spirit for the integer quantum effect, I say, well, look, the system will tend to, um, to favor the situation with the maximum speed. Here it's the maximal speed for this U4 cross U4 symmetry. Many guess the negative situation when I have all this, uh, the speed only got you think about integer quantum effect case. But even for the integer quantum effect case, I can apply any SU2 rotation of my uh, maximum uh, of my maximal speed. And here I can do the same, starting from the situation where I feel only one band, I can apply any of the four cross two rotation. And that would be also a ground state of my model. Okay, but you see that all of them. Just here, an average chain number, a non zero chain number. Here, the situation for minus two will be slightly different because you can find two different situations. Um, the first situation is to say, well, I can feel two bands out of the eight with the same chain number. So that's a situation where I feel that it's a two band, two band with a both spin up, opposite by a k and k prime for the same chain number minus one. And once again, I can apply any of the uniform cross for rotation to this state. This state will have a chain number two. Remember, the uniform cross for rotation will preserve the chain number. Now, for I can also consider a different case. Maybe I feel one band with a chain number one and another band with a chain number minus one, uh, plus one. So overall, my ground state has a chain number zero, even though I'm between factor minus two. Once again, I have to be for positive for rotation. And you can play this game for all integer factors going from. Um, minus four to plus four. And you have a table summarizing all of the cases, knowing that you have a symmetry between mu and minus mu. So I always describe all the other cases where the field factor is uh, negative or zero. And you see that for field factor minus three, you can also have a case with chain number plus one. When you have um, an even field factor, then you have Solution with a chain number zero at the end here, or other non zero chain number. Whereas for the other case, minus one, which is also um, which is R minus three, you get chain number plus one plus three, depending on how you hear me. Which another more, more fancy way to say which representation of which pro magnitude you for plus you will consider. For, for simplicity, uh, during this talk, I will focus solely on the two field factors minus three and minus two, um, which are summarized here. Uh, I think some of you might argue that in also high energy physics. So, if you're a big fan of SU and representation, um, you can write or you can associated with these states, um, young tablets corresponding to uh, the different situation. I think it doesn't matter really here. Um, one thing that you can do with these young tablet is you can also try to discuss the nature of the low energy excitations, either the neutral one or the charge excitations. That's something that I yeah, will uh, also talk about in this lecture. So in my case, I will really focus on the ground state only, no, no big excitations. All right, so that was the situation where we made like a few additional uh, assumptions about what we simplify even more the model than just simple projection of 2D ITMs. Now, let's see, I mean, what's going on when we're away from this perfect world. The first question could be, well, the flat metric condition that allows you to make the 
actual empirical proof that the state attributes we just showed are in the ground state of the system. If we remove this assumption, do we still have the same ground state? Here, there is no other way, with the exception of the, uh, the chair number zero state of the state, even in green factors, but more generating, you cannot prove uh, either the uniqueness or that these states are actually ground state. So here is basically the recipe of what we have done, and we use a simple technique of insight minimization. When I say simple technique, just to, to give you some, some flavor, the matrices that you have to, to deal with is on the order of between, um, let's say, 1 million to um, 100 million for, for the size of the matrix. So it's like a 1 million by 1 million. Of course, it's a very sparse matrix. So that's that's why I can put it in the computer. It's still massive and So we discretize the wide organism as I described previously. We take any one point operation to one point operation. We consider a uh, finite number of electrons, which is run the code and get the results. Um, I use a parameter lambda to describe the situation where we have a flat matrix condition and that's equal to zero, and then that equal to one, but it's not true if we actually do it without this approximation. And let's start with minus three, which is a simple case of a four by two lattice for the more green zone. And that's the results with the flat matrix condition. Then you get the result that yes, the ground state is with the syllabus describing. Namely, the churn number plus one minus one, the choice, um, which is maximally uh, by the spin product. If you now forget about the flat metric condition, assuming the ground states, uh, if you look at this item, will be the same. And it's actually exactly the same in mathematical. So even though you cannot prove it rigorously, that without the capital condition, the state I was discussing is the exact one state series, and there is no additional one state appearing at this point. Well, I'm small details because your Hamiltonian is a U4, as the U4 cross U4 symmetry, um, it's not for the, the spin case. So imagine that you take a system of, of quantum spin and look at the theoretic state. If you have this combines, the theoretic state is always an ideal set of your part. Simply because for the theoretic state, it's the hyperspace dimension, there's only one state. And the two contains the, the CP symmetry when it has to be given. It's the CP symmetry and thus orthogonal, and it's one by one matrix. So, so that all the selection uh, by definition is an open state of the non trivial equations are the ground state, you know, the unique ground state. We have one question when you come. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd like to ask a question about the uh, performance of numerics here. So um, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, decree doesn't look Large in this case, m1, m2 is yeah. like four by two. So, um, what I'd like to ask is, um, uh, which one is a better scenario, increasing m1, m2, or increasing four q, or the more number of bands to be considered in the in 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 in, in the numerical calculation? So, remember that what you do here is to fix the game factor. The game factor will be defined by the number of bands. Well, in the way it's defined, it's like this. So if you fix n1 times n2, you have n you will fix also the number of particles. And you have eight bands. So roughly speaking, without taking into account the symmetries, it's like uh, what is it? n times n1 times n2, choose n and vice versa. I, I tend to. to to, uh, to make the confusion between the two definitions between the French people and the US people. So basically, n choose a times n1 times n2 times n. So it's 
that's why the, um, the performance will be the bottleneck is it's not really a problem of choosing the crude, it's the total number of particles that you consider. You can consider any crude as long as well, you say a fixed number of electrons, because in fact N1 and N2, the product is fixed. But in terms of performance, like the type of crude doesn't, doesn't matter. And it will still be exponential system size. For the four by the four by two with all the degrees of freedom without making any assumption about you know, and spin polarization, by polarization is roughly that you can do uh, at best maybe you can do four by uh, maybe five by two or four four by three if you really want to extend long to run the code. But that's that's basically the bet that you can get if you don't assume that, for example, well, the system is being polarized. And the number of degrees of freedom for electrons goes down from n1 8 times n1 times a2 to just 4 times n1 times n2. And then you can look at the bigger system for n1 times n2. Yeah. One more. Yep. Yes. Um, you said that the size of the hydrogen is about 1 million times 1 million. Can you show how you come up with that number? It's it's really like you know just a combinatorial factor and including the symmetries. One thing I didn't so it's really you know uh, whatever n one stat number. <laughs> that's that's basically how you get it. Which of course you use the symmetries to to reduce that number to a more tractable. Uh, but for example, it's it's actually pretty difficult to implement the full U4 symmetries. Once again, the baby version, think about SU2. Usually, in mo most of the people, what they will do is to implement SZ as a good quantum number, even though the Newtonian had a SU2 symmetry. And so, but that's the, the one million is typically. I don't have an exact number for here for the four by two uh, system. Uh, we have that in the paper, a basic table with you know, all the field of space dimension that you would have to deal with, including the symmetry that we consider. But that's basically the order of energy. Once again, let's be honest, it's a sparse system. It's not a very sparse. It's not like you know, a spin chain, just because the interaction is more complex. But it's still. The number of turns in your Hamiltonian you will only grow on one line polynomially with the number of points rather than exponentially. Thank you. One more question. Thank you, Professor, for your wonderful talk. Happy birthday. Um, uh, I do want to ask a very good question regarding the Hamiltonian. Uh, mm -hmm. So, in the previous slide, you mentioned that the numerics was. The um, electron electron interactions were treated using the Hartree Bach method like a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. What I mentioned is the, the interaction between the electron in the field bed uh -huh. and the electron in the active bed. Yes. Oh, uh, so basically, isn't the active active is not is beyond the field. But only yeah, and that's that's what you you actually take into account when you do numerics. Uh -huh. You you know you project onto the active bands. Yes. So you might say I completely forget the, the electron that fit them. Uh -huh. It's not completely we did, we did a better job than that. We take like a first correction coming from the field band. So you treat, the, the band. you treat all the bands below the active bands as in the field, and the active bands themselves yeah. have to be on the beyond yeah. the Exactly. That's that's just this one is mainly in anybody. Mm -hmm. This one is in the field. Um, it will be active and passive. That's a new field. So there's going to be a new field term from lower band and then a separate hub. The hub is going to be separable from lower term to upper term. Yeah. Right from the term. But I mean, I mean uh, don't worry. Joe, which is like here, uh, we'll, we have like one or two slides about like a proper derivation and not just hand waving like I did uh, here. Oh, sorry. So Thank if you're the next talk, you will have all the, uh, the answer in a clear way. Okay. All right. 
It's cool. I have questions. People are alive. Nice. <laughs> Okay. Ah, ah. Light versus reality. Um, so, of course, there are many parameters that you can change in the model, especially when some of them are pretty relevant when it comes to making contact with the experiment. One of them is, you know, the dispersion. We can work in the flat band, so we can discard the kinetic energy, which is just by an order of magnitude should be a pretty good approximation, but in principle, we can go from here, we have uh, no kinetic energy, uh, to here we have a full kinetic term. So we use T as a parameter. You know, just go from zero to one, and continue to from the flat band solution to the one with the kinetic energy. Once again, due to just some uh, argument based on the energy, it should not change much the situation. The more interesting case is about W0. And that's why I was insisting so much when I showed the last time the effect of omega 0 on the band structure. We can go continuously from omega 0 equal to 0, so the carol limit, up to more realistic bands such as we can say 1.8. So the ratio of W0. But the one. We do have some change in the band structure, but I mean, there's no gap losing, for example. So it could be interesting to see, like, is it the same case? Can we, can we go from the situation where we have a very nice and then symmetry to a more realistic one? So yeah, that's basically what I put down here. That's the red region, and that's the theory paradox. So I would like to be here. Uh, unfortunately, I'm here. So, let's work. And then, the only thing that you have left when you start removing, like, the Carol, the Carol Center, and then the Carol Limit, or you start cranking up the Infinity Community, you can only have, you can only rely on the limits. So, let's start with minus three. Which was a simple space. It's basically the translator of the super plus for symmetry, and basically the simple one version. And these plots, um, without entering too much into the, uh, the details, they try to, to tell you something about the nature of what you have at, uh, let's say, Let's focus on this one where we don't have the plot metric condition. If we start from the fully symmetry condition, you see that if you crank up the kinetic energy, the overlap between the solution at zero zero and the solution at finite kinetic or finite t, well, yeah, you have a slight decrease, but there's not a major change. And that's also uh, these plots uh, were done, for example, on a much bigger grid, uh, now we can get solution that the system is still spin polarized and very polarized. If you now move away from the Carroll limits, the situation is more dramatic. Sense that at some point the overlap will just be zero because the quantum numbers will be different. The quantum numbers will not be zero. The, the case here where you have a flat metric condition is a bit better. When you have a state, uh, the, the chance they persist in the bit longer because of just omega zero, but it has some point to grow this here. Of course, it's it's a very remember that the DM model that we have for the model that we consider here, the assumption that I don't think we have two times, we didn't have. Uh, take into account more also expensive variables in the market stream, for example, this will also change the market stream. And all the numerics that people have done are either based on um, um, DMG or Hartree Fock, we have roughly a phase, the same phase of uh, diagram. And just for to advertise some way that should be on the archive line. Maybe two weeks if we are lucky. Uh, we 
use another method of an executive issue to uh, try to see the, to prove it exactly what's going on in this region. And what we did was, well, we need to have a bigger system because the equity is, is clearly a problem here. So let's make it use half report. Half report, once again, is just a leak approximation, or you can see that as a subaction network over the fox state. You always look at the plant state of the concept as a single fox state, you can leak whatever function you want to put in there. The good thing is you can allow for translation symmetry breaking. Of course, you can do that immediately. It's also pretty uh, straightforward to include that in the half report creation and pretty large. And what we have found is that for the more realistic value of the data zero of the data one, we tested several ways of breaking the translation symmetry by, you know, rather than having one NPC, uh, apart from the zero. Uh, where in itself, we consider a system like where you have two unit cells in one direction, or a system where you have two by two unit cells. So you enlarge the units of the system, which you measure four ratios. Um, the green and so on. And you run your after for calculation, and you see which state has the lowest dimension. That's basically two plus here on two different grids, I mean 12 by 12, 18 by 18. So we have tested like all these different where you can enlarge the, the, the unit cell. And in the interesting region, we find that well, the system tends to break the translation symmetry by doubling the, the, the my unit cell. So it looked like a strike base, but actually the structure is a bit more complex. Of course, this one now has zero chain number. And it doesn't look like a stride phase because there is no modulation of the total density, the same density for every minority cell. The way it breaks the transition symmetry is by the density per layer. Overall, it's a bit what I want to show you here is not to give you like the number of results, is to show that as soon as you're dealing with that kind of quantum input system, you can think about them as some kind of constructed system. Um, it's you have usually a, like different states with roughly the same energy. And which one will win at the end of the day? like a chain instead in one case, or a stripe phase, or in the metallic phase? We might depend on small change of the parameters. So that's why they also you will find different papers from the results, because depending on the kind of approximation you do, you might find a slightly different ground state. You see that minus three the situation is already uh, uh, let's say a bit more complex, that's what you might know, get by simplifying a lot of Hamilton. Once again, there's a virtue to see the part of model. Because here, at some point, you're able to derive some exponents of them, but you just see up to which point you can extend them. Minus two is more interesting than minus three because you have three, two different types of states one with a chain number two, and another one with a chain number zero. They are very different, even though in the simplified model. Once again, we can test what's going on when we move away from, from the data view for proxy for symmetry. Remember that if you increase the bin factor, think that the hip of space will, if you, if you fix the recruit, this will increase a lot the size of the hip of space. That's why in here we look at a smaller system compared to the previous one. But overall, the, uh, the message here is. No matter how, how you move away from the new focus you bought, you will always tend to favor the state with the lowest chain number. Then the kind of symmetries for the and the other symmetries you break up the spin, for example, will depend on the page you do the move away from the new focus you bought. Namely, if you move away from the tarot with the deeper flat band approximation, 
then you favor the spinter of magnetism. Whereas if you move away by keeping the cowl symmetry but adding the kinetic energy, then you favor the spin singlet. But in both cases, the spin singlet, the C40 state of which proves that it's too pretty. And once again, uh, if you start increasing the get zero uh, at some point, all these states will start the, uh, the study of the approximation of your advanced interest. Uh, I don't know what Dale will talk about it, um, but you can make actually a perturbation theory treatment away from the default process of the And what you can show is first, um, all the states that I mentioned that previously with the challenges you are still exact ground states. As long as you have perturbation conditions, you don't know you're away from the calories. And uh, for any uh, other different factor, when you start moving away from the default cost, you for it favor in principle the state with a smallest chain number. So for even pain factor, the smallest that you can get is zero. But if you look at the alpha factors, minus three and minus one, minus three is only one option, so it's still the chain number one. But for minus one, when you have two options, either chain number one or chain number three, you will always favor the chain number one. Uh, it's not the end of the story because you might say, well, the experiment with your so state for the advanced function number. Uh, and uh, Jao will, uh, will talk about it also. But just to, uh, as a teaser, if you start thinking about you know, the magnetic field as a perturbation, you will have the opposite effect that some, at, for some critical value, you will favor uh, the state of the chain with the largest chain. And you can have a for transition between the chain number zero and chain number two when you increase the magnetic field. But maybe in the last five minutes I have, um, I would like to, uh, to advertise some other work we have done. Um, so, even with the, uh, the half trip block result I've shown you, they're, they're done by uh, Bank Sheet. Uh, this, uh, by the way, uh, the talk is uh, was done especially by, by Dimitri Kaikari. And the idea is the following is to try to you know, identify which states we have in experience. And even if you think about you know, not maybe the more complex situation I have to describe to you, but state which are close to what we have at the default first for C symmetry points. Um, so for minus three, we have only one option, but for, as I mentioned, for to minus two, you have two options. And once again, once you start, you would say you say, oh, it's like you know, feeding the band with a chain of the minus one spin at the by k. I can then still apply any uh useful rotation on, on top of that. So it's the actual all the possible ground state is you know, one of the states where you feel the bands, and then something when you apply to go to four cross rotation. So, what we would like to do in, in contact with the experimentalist here in Princeton is we do the, uh, the SGM measurement. So, you see here that okay, that's a setup which will slightly change the interaction the material is mentioning. So, it's critical interaction. Um, you get your measurement with a space, you can do the Fourier transform, and out of that, if you would like to reconstruct well both of the states and which you focus for the patient group, you have to favor from the states. And to do such a calculation, uh, to make an act between the particular results and the extra measurements, the key quantity here is the spectral function. If you look at the TBG status, that's what we consider, the spectral function should be simplified a lot. Once again, the glowing details, details doesn't matter, but let's say it 
there are two uh, ingredients. The first one is this expression here, which depends on the, uh, the ground states and the charge one excitation. So the psi and phi and their energies. And the spatial factor dr, this one only depends on the non interacting path can the TPG and the graphene PCR regions. But overall, that's something in principle. Uh, if you look at the square you need, you need the ground state wave function, you need the one particle excitation, and you need the initial excitation. And that's something that, in principle, from the simple description I have just provided, from the list, uh, what we were able to extract uh, at the before cost of the points, we were able to, uh, to get and thus to obtain the spectral function. Once again, the details really doesn't matter. You, you, you can look at the preprint we have on the archive about, about that. But this uh, the question that allows you to uh, extract information about the charge one excitations. And because we know about the exact results, even though the engineer is at the end of the day, you can do that in a very large system. You know, that you can you may not be able to do if you want. You know, Start a way from scratch by using the quantum and quantum problem. And one thing that um, is really interesting here is there is a very simple signature at least to pull out some of the states and uh, of the complete states that we have. And it's called the theory distortion. It's basically uh, in the STM experiments. That's the case where you don't have any uh, key distortion or a measurement. That's what you have when you have a key code distortion. Maybe you have an enlargement of the um, of the graphene itself by a factor of square root of three and square root of three. And you can see it, for example, by having a little Fourier transfer of peaks and the k of the k graph point when there is a key distortion. Um, let's start with a simple case with minus three. If you start from state which is, so that's the low sphere for the value degree of freedom. Oops, uh, basically, assume that the system is being polarized for simplicity. So minus three, it's a big, a big chain number one, uh, and I'm now use the degree of freedom. Uh, so you get the value, uh, value degree of freedom. So if my system is free, very polarized, then you don't have any key point distortion. That's what you observe here. Now, if I make the rotation on the block sphere for this value degree of freedom like this. Then I will have a deep discussion. So that's, I mean, that's something that you expect basically if the distortion comes from the interplay between the two values degrees of freedom, k and k prime, from the division of graphene. If you have a state with a break, then, uh, with that symmetry by choosing the direction that uh, have a weight on both k and k prime, we will observe the deep discussion. But the might is a bit boring. Uh, the situation is actually much more interesting when you, when you look at the, the minus two case. And especially the case where you look at, let's say, um, opposite degree, uh, opposite chain, let's say, chain number zero. Uh, if you have different types of state that you can, so that you can consider, you can consider a state where you both, you first polarize uh, both chain number um, with Mac important with k value, let's say, um, then there will be nothing. And you can make a rotation, but you can make two different kinds of rotation. The first one is here. So if you rotate both bands, the position number, with uh, in the same direction on the velocity. 
So that's why it's probable because it's just the position of the period of the text. And it's the number of layers we propose, which is TIDC. So it's just now the decomposed for a state with a special uh, decomposed position. And the other option is the KIDC, where you rotate the, uh, the two bands, the fusion bands, in different opposite directions on the cross here. And what you observe is depending on which state, so how you rotate two bands on the glow sphere. In one case, you will see a degree distortion, so then you need this one. Uh, but for this one, where you know, if you look at your result of minus, we also expect degree distortion. But because of this activity in such a situation, the particular distortion will, will cancel out. So from the STM experiment, in principle, you can discard some of the focus rotation that you could imagine for the ground state, just by do you have a monthly degree distortion in the motion mix. So this is just a summary for the uh, situation. And I think at this stage, it's almost that time. Uh, I think it's a quick point to stop and maybe uh, give you like an overview of what you have done, what we have done until now. So we have discussed how we deal with interaction practically in terms of implementation or make an additional assumption to simplify the model. Just by using the different symmetries, we are able in some cases to build some exact magical ground states. And by then using the merits, we can try to see the validity of this approximation away from the perfect situation. And so among all the, even in the simplified situation where we, we, you know, we are working the flat band parallels and you know, the, the fragmentary condition, even there, uh, you already have um, different types of candidates. And these candidates, in principle, some of them can be discriminated pretty easily by looking at the, uh, the STM um, results. There are many things still we can discuss about this interactive phase. And maybe uh, a message here you know, when we do a theory, we tend to focus on the non interacting part first and then discuss the what's going on with the intuitive interaction. Of course, in experiments, you always have the interaction. And you cannot just you know, make a limit where you, you don't have the you don't have the interaction, you just have the pristine non-interacting system. It would be cool if this was just like part of the, the system, but it's not the case. You always have to deal with interaction. And especially in a system where you do have the advancement of the interaction is so important, you can have a variety of phases in which you, and sometimes just by tuning a few parameters, you can go from one type of phase to another and all will be quite interesting. Okay, and now, uh, thank you. And Joe will, will now take the lead. But before that, I want to thank Nicola for this very excellent talk. <laughs> Of those, uh, yeah. uh, thank you for the very interesting talk. Uh, can I ask a short question about the second order perturbation analysis? Where well, it seems like the conclusion there is that for any feeling, uh, the smallest uh, total trend number is favorable. Is there an intuition behind that? I understand that in terms of the inability uh, or, or, or having a smaller trend number in some sense. In, Plus, better way to localize the wave function and minimize curve repulsion. Is there some, some simple picture like that that can help you understand the result of the second order perturbation analysis? Uh, let me ask Joe if he will talk about that uh, in his lecture. Because yeah. uh, I think if, if you like you know, a detailed answer, I see. Yeah. I'll look forward to that. Thank you. Okay, 
questions. Any more? Any more? Maybe one more. Yes. Same for my so I have a question about this uh, STM measurement. So let's mm -hmm. assume we don't observe any calculate pattern in STM. Then can how do we distinguish this uh, KIVC state and uh, just some symmetry unbroken state? And you know, both of them are each other. <laughs> I, I, I could make a nasty answer. Ask to the chairman. Basically, I mean, you know, the k distortion distortion is, is very bad. It's just um, a simple uh, observation, but you have much more information that you can extract from the STM than just GRE degree distortion amount. If you look at what Alias has done and my data for, for the case of graphene and field, where you have a situation which is somehow um, for the, uh, the U equals zero case. You also have a V4 symmetry, and you can match to, well, at least maybe in some cases more, just as you symmetry for value. You can try to reconstruct what kind of, of transformation or what kind of ground state you have by you know, using the full information, like the full spectral function um, that, you, that you obtain from, from the measurements. That, 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 that was done for the case of graphing the field. And the hope is, well, we can try to do the same for for twisted biography. And Jonah actually is is working with that with the experimentalists. Oh, thanks. I should get back working on it. So I think we'll have to stop those questions for now. And for <laughs> thanks everyone. Uh, we'll see you back in about 15 minutes. Thank you.